on and we're going to welcome our guest. Okay, guys, and welcome into the show. This is a great one for us. The president of Rangers baseball operation, John Daniels is joining us. John, thanks so much for coming on the very first show with us. Yeah, excited to do it. Thanks for having me on. It's quite an honor for you. I know. To, to... <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. I'm going to put this in the bio. Let's see if we can get you a plaque or something. <laughs> About time. <laughs> Busy times for you guys here the last week, scrambling. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, all the there's, there's plenty to do without, uh, you know, the, the COVID breakout uh, curveball that we got. But, <laughs> you know, listen, I think in the scheme of things, kind of a um, one glad like everybody seems to be doing well. Um, but, you know, kind of uh, maybe a little surprising. We hadn't, you know, fortunate we hadn't dealt with anything to this degree earlier on, you know, with everything going on. So, uh, but again, you know, everybody seems to be doing well. Most guys, you know, didn't really have much in the way of symptoms. The ones that, that did are, are uh, improving. I know you can't predict this stuff, but do you guys feel like you're kind of knock on wood all clear or should be by next week? That's the hope. I mean, um, that's the hope we, we've, you know, we'll, we've got regular testing going on. So, you know, you can kind of get, get that phone call at any time. Um, as you know, I think we've all learned in every walk of life, but, um, right now we seem to be good. We've gone a couple of days without, without hearing anything like that. Um, definitely it's, it's caused us to, to, uh, double down our efforts to, to, you know, be cautious and be smart and, you know, everyone's doing a little more mask wearing here and, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think everybody had kind of gotten a little lax in the, in the, the Delta variant, you know, make sure reconsider that. So we're, uh, we'll be a little more cautious going forward. Yeah. Uh, this has just been a busy time. Like, you know, with, with the draft, no, no, no break right into the trade deadline. Just seems like you guys have been, I don't know, a real, 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 real busy stretch. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it always is, um, quite frankly, I wish it was a little busier. I wish we were you know, worried about contention and, and uh, postseason roster. And obviously, you know, we're not in that mix. Our, our focus is more on uh, um, instructional league and, and kind of setting things up for next year and offseason planning acquisitions. Um, but you're right that it was a unique year um, on top of, you know, the, the, the off-field stuff. It was a unique year in, in that the draft got moved back um, and the, you know, the draft uh, right over the all-star breaks, so that kind of, the few days you kind of typically plan for, yeah, let, let the staff have some downtime that was gone. And then that ran right into the trade deadline. So it was, it was fun in a lot of ways, uh, but it was, you know, it, it was a challenge to juggle a lot of things there. How, how much different is it now that you're in a, a different role and have Chris Young? Are you delegating more or are you still diving in? Uh, both, uh, both. I mean, um, you know, the trade deadline was, uh, you know, probably every bit as involved as, as I have been in the past. And, um, but, you know, there was uh, some delegation that were, you know, Chris handled some of the, the, the trade conversations directly with other clubs, you know, we kind of split up uh, those duties. Um, uh, and I, I think the way we looked at it was from the time he came on, you know, right around Thanksgiving last year, beginning of December, um, moving forward, I think the goal has been a, a kind of gradual transition. You know, I mean, he's, he's got a ton of experience, but hadn't had front office experience and on the op side, um, you know, a ton of experience at the league as a player, you know, very bright, great with people, but he's experiencing all these things for the first time. So next year draft, next year trade deadline, next year rule five, it'll, he'll have gone through the cycle. So this year, you know, I, I, I had probably more of a hands-on role than I, than, um, I think as we go through it again, the second time we'll continue to kind of transition and, and he'll uh, continue to take more of the, the direct lead on things. Well, there, I mean, it was a good month. You guys got who you wanted in the draft. You, you added a lot of depth in the farm system and it looks like it's finally being recognized. No, I know you guys have always been high in the system. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, listen, I'm obviously I'm a little biased. I think that had we played a minor league season last year, I think that recognition might've come even a year earlier, you know, it was just, it, it was nothing to evaluate last year, you know, from the minor league side. So uh, that was a little challenging, but it was, there have been a lot of, of good things going on. Um, 
Um, I much rather be on the other side of the, those trades in general, where we're adding to the big league club and telling Woody that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, like, Hey, you know, we're, we're about to flip the script here and soon enough I'll be coming down, you know, and telling you the, the players we're adding to your team, not taking off your team, but for what we needed to accomplish, you're right. This is a, this is a good month. Um, you know, guys killed it in the draft. Um, we had a lot of like positive development stories of, of some of the players that were already here. Uh, guys coming back off injury, guys, you know, breakout seasons, some Dustin Harris and others. And then we added, you know, another, you know, seven or eight guys at the trade deadline that, you know, we can add to that mix and continue to develop and move forward. Yeah. You know, looking at the minors and, and some of the trades you made last year, you mentioned Dustin Harris, your pro scouts really kind of kicked some serious tail here at the last and even in the past few off seasons, they have, man. Um, you know, they've done a great job with some of these kind of under the radar uh, acquisitions. You know, mentioned Dustin Harris. Um, you know, I'm a, this one stings a little bit, but Emmanuel Classe was a great recommendation by the by the pro staff, and you know, we ended up trading him for Kluber. That you know, with the COVID deal and the injury, it didn't work out, but doesn't take away from the job that they did in, in, in identifying him, recommending him. I think, I think Dane Acker is going to be one of those guys. Um, you know, Jonah Heim has, has shown promise. Nate Lowe has, has shown promise. I think there's, there's going to be more there. Dunning appears to be a, a, a fit for us going forward uh, and, and, and on down the line. So, um, you know, the irony is, you know, Dustin Harris is really the second name in that deal, you know, where, where you know, Smith was the guy that, was really more focused. He's had this recurring hamstring issue that's that's held him back a little bit, but he can really hit as well. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, you know, getting him back and, and just, uh, you're right, the, 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 the group, that department as a whole has done really good work. So um, this off season is going to, it's got a chance to be a, get kind of messy. I mean, really, even, even the last month with all your, like in terms of the 40 man roster, you got you've got the guys on the 60 who've got to come off and then you've got the guys you're going to want to protect from the rule five draft so how it seems like there's a lot of a lot more juggling maybe maybe it's because of last year and covid but it just seems like there's a lot you're going to have a busy a busy off season really from before the winter meetings even start yeah i mean it's so I, I look at it this way, I, you know, you'd rather be in that spot where you have more interesting yeah. guys than, than the alternative, right? Where you're, you've got a ton of space because you don't have players. Um, <laughs> you know, listen, we, we'd love to, to consolidate and, and there might be some opportunities to do that. We'll, we'll look into that. Um, and we understand that, you know, there, there's a chance you end up losing some players too in the, in the process, whether it's in the rule five or if we have to take guys off the roster, but the, that's really been our focus here the last couple months and will continue to be in September is to take a look at, at some of these players, um, both the roster bubble guys that are, that are on the roster. We want to make sure we give them an opportunity to play them, see them in, um, in, in game situations and evaluate them against the, the best competition. And then also the, the rule five guys probably you know, going into it. We probably saw, you know, maybe four or five, kind of definite additions to, to the roster on the rule five and Nick Snyder is one guy we've already added. Um, and then, uh, you know, a handful of others that we're going to have to make decisions on. And fortunately we've got a little time to do that. Yeah. Uh, also the off season, you've mentioned this and Chris has mentioned this, um, both Chris's actually, you're going to have some money to play with and you expect to be players in free agency. And I, we all know the names are out there, but um, how do you, how do you, how do you, narrow down who who is the right fit well i mean so a few things i mean one is that you know it, it is a good free agent class but it also appears to be a good free agent class you know a year from now and then two years from now and you know we want to take meaningful steps forward but we're we don't necessarily need to do all of our shopping in, in one you know one in one uh free agent class you know we'll, we'll explore trades as well um, we want to, you know, continue to give opportunities to our guys internally. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, there's a few spots that we probably won't look to, to go big at because just because I think we have some internal options. But for the most part, you know, we have some flexibility with the, the young guys coming up that they can play different positions and it allows us to really target just who are the best fits overall. Um, so you know, I think – because of that, we, there really aren't many players that we could that we will be out on. 
I mean, I, just by from a positional standpoint, I mean, I think it's going to be more, you know, for, does he fit for us uh, financially? Does he fit for us, you know, um, in the type of player that we want to acquire? But we can really consider guys at just about any position. And then uh, the last one for me, um, when when you when you talk about trading with the state of the farm system, there's a do you feel, do you feel there's enough depth, and maybe that's the consolidation part you're talking about to go out and and, and send some prospects for, for players. That's not our that's not our preference. Um, you know, we're not necessarily looking to deal from the system. Um, we, you know, we want to continue to, to grow it and, and, and have it support, you know, a long-term, um, you know, championship contender. But, uh, you know, we did it last year in, in the deal for Nate Lowe. I mean, we are, op- you know, you're always, we're open to trading prospects if you're getting controllable players back, guys that are going to be here beyond just a year, a year or so. Um, but we, I, I'm, I'm quite confident that we have, you know, the players um, in the system that, you know, we can acquire, you know, anybody that's that's out there uh, if we if we choose if we decide that's the right fit for us yeah hey john i had a, a couple questions i kind of come from the fan side doing this i've been covering them for three years but uh been a long time fan but these are just some fun questions when you were growing you're a northeastern guy when you were growing up who were you a fan of growing up i was a mets fan yeah i was a mets <laughs> fan so i you know Born in uh, in seventy seven, so the, the the Mets teams in the mid eighties were kind of right as I was becoming a big fan, and uh, you know Gooden and Strawberry, Keith Hernandez, Gary Carter, Ron oh, Darling, yeah, yeah that, that that whole crew. Now, did you play sports growing up, or were you just a fan? More of a fan. I mean, I played more in, in the neighborhood, more pickup type stuff, but I didn't play it at a high level. <laughs> like most of us, right? So, <laughs> hey, now when when was it that you thought you wanted to be in baseball? Were you in college when you thought, you know what, this may be some way I want to go? So, yeah, a little bit. I mean, um, I, I, there was some discussion in college about it. I, I I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I you know I want to hang out and have a good time with my friends for the most part of that, that sure. point of my life. I still actually would. That's still my first choice. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know, my one of my college roommates was AJ Preller, who's now the you know the Padres GM, and right. um, and so AJ, to give him credit, he knew kind of early on that he wanted to to get into sports. I didn't think it was really very realistic, you know. I hadn't played, hadn't coached, hadn't you know anything like that. And uh, so I, you know, we were kind of you know sports nerds and would you know would talk about it all the time. And um, you know, he took it to a, even a different level and he ended up doing an internship with the Phillies during college. He, he uh, sophomore year, he was he, uh, sophomore, junior, year, I forget, but he went one semester, lived, worked in Philadelphia, he worked in their sales department, but he, he had got some opportunity in the baseball ops group. And we would talk about thinking the opportunity might be more in, in football with the salary cap and kind of, you know, more of an economics background that there might be an opportunity there, but he ended up getting his foot in the door with major league baseball. And uh, I went to Boston work for the parent company of Dunkin' Donuts and they own some other brands. And I would end up talking to him more about his job than I did mine. And, uh, cause he was at the league office and he would, he would send me things to, you know, things to review and help him like talk through his job. I remember he sent me like, I think like Manny Ramirez's contract and, you know, stuff that he probably, <laughs> probably shouldn't have been sending me. Um, and, uh, but we, you know, talk about his job a ton and I went with him to the winter meetings a couple of times, helped him like, you know, do a few things. And then uh, that led to getting my foot in the door with the Rockies for an internship. You were one of those kids that walks around at the winter meetings in the suit. And... Exactly. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think I wore a suit. Um, but yeah, I did. So I, I you know, it's interesting that the, um, the first one I went to uh, the winter meeting, I went to two before I got a job. I went to 99 in Anaheim. And I went to 2000 here in Dallas, the year that the, the Rangers signed, you know, signed Alex Rodriguez. And, um, but in 99 in Anaheim, it, it, this was right, I think before like the heavy lobby scene, okay. because we were, we were hanging out at the lobby, um, AJ and myself and like you know, hanging out late at night. And I remember the reporters were there, Peter Gammons and Paul Hagen and, and all these guys. And then George Brett and Bruce Bochy, I remember Ned Coletti and, I mean, and, and the access was unbelievable. There were very few job seekers at the time. So it was, a uh, it was, you know, we were hanging out at the bar with like these hall of fame, you know, caliber guys and all these different 
you know, corners of the industry. And I thought, yeah. like, what, what that was amazing, you know? And then it, I remember in 2000 here at the Anatole, it changed a little bit. Like it wasn't quite the same level of access, a bigger hotel and, and all that. And then the following year I was, you know, I was working for the Rangers in 2001 when it was in Boston. So it changed fast. I was kind of, I, I was fortunate. I kind of got in right before the lobby became what you see it is now a lot you know it's like you can barely walk through the lobby without you know without uh you know a million people so you don't want to the lobby in fact i don't want anymore no i don't <laughs> and i feel bad because I, I i mean to your point man i i, I was uh, not that far removed from being that you know the job seeker yeah in, in that but the difference was i was probably one of you know eight guys that year at the winter meetings for us now it's you know one of eight thousand right it, right that's okay. Look, we're going to end this thing on a fun one. I've always wanted to know this, uh, following and, and, and all the moves you've made and how you did it and what, and you can name names. I hope you can in this case, but has there ever been a deal where it came together, everything came together. And within a half an hour, it was something you weren't even thinking of. Another team wasn't thinking of you get either, you got the call or you made the call and said, what about this player? And within 30 minutes, you guys had a deal and put something together and had a trade that quick. Has there ever been one that just came together and it was just like that out of the blue? Um, I don't know that it was quite that fast, but when we reacquired Mike Napoli and, uh, was it 2015? Um, it happened very, very quickly. Um, and, uh, and, and part of it, I think was Ben Sherrington was the GM in, in Boston and we kind of reached out and, you know, we, we were thinking about bringing Nap in to play a little bit of left, you know, we, we weren't, we were looking for a bat off the bench, a little bit of first, we didn't think he could catch anymore. We ended up playing him in left field, you know, which was kind of <laughs> like a little bit crazy to begin with, but, um, we made the call and I think Ben wanted to put Nap in a good spot. You know, he'd won a world series with them. He's kind of, I think they felt like they wanted to do right by, by Nap. And so uh, it ha that one happened really quickly. And it was obviously, it was a lot of fun because we knew what we were getting. Yeah. I, I, I remember it seemed like the Kindler fielder trade happened quickly, maybe not 20 minutes, but it seemed like I remember you guys saying that one happened quick. It did happen fairly quickly. I think the biggest thing was, you know, just negotiating the, the money piece there. Um, and the way that one when we got messy was that, uh, you know, Dave called back to tell us that, that he would do it. Dave Dombrowski in, in Detroit. And I was literally getting on a plane at that time for a, a weekend away with my wife. And, um, and so uh, Prince Fielder had a, had a, uh, a no trade clause that he had to waive. So, I remember, you know, talking to Dave and saying, hey, do me a favor, don't, please don't tell Scott Boris, the agent, please don't tell, you know, Scott and Prince what the deal is because we hadn't spoken to Ian yet and I didn't want it getting out, especially that I was about to be on a flight for two, two or three hours. And uh, I don't know exactly how it happened, but, you know, it, it got out. I always kind of thought it got out through, you know, because, because you know, Scott or Prince were aware and, it, it, and you know, Ian – rightfully so was pissed about how it got out and like i i, I felt terrible about it, about that but uh yeah so that's a good example man sometimes when things happen kind of quickly and, and you're not in a good spot to handle them you know it was it was not as clean as i would have liked it to be that was on november 20th by the way and i was on furlough at the time so i couldn't write the story and i was pretty pissed <laughs> hey, it, yeah it's all your fault john see that, that jeff couldn't get something out that's right. Well, listen, John, look, I know you're busy. It's so great you joined us for the very first episode. The fact you stopped and that that's Jeff's pull and putting this thing together to give you a call and you, and you doing. I know all you guys. Pull, yeah, that, all that. pull, And you guys work together on Do It For Direct, which is near and dear to me also uh, and all that. But, John, we can't thank you a lot enough. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. And, uh, you know, we'll all get together right at trade deadline. You'll come on that day and we'll just Perfect. sit there and, and just yeah. do it together. And you will be the scoop. You can get us the scoop that morning let's do it and i wish you guys luck man i wish you guys a lot of luck with this uh, launch and thanks for having me on on the uh the kickoff here all right yeah your trophy's in the mail <laughs> <laughs> that's john daniels president of baseball operations for the texas rangers thanks john all right fellas take care take care